Hello friends. Today we are going to cover Indian polity. So let's start with the historical evolution of Indian constitution. The first uh, first of all we should see how the Indian constitution started. So the in under the British regulation companies administration regulating act was passed in 1773 two most important things in this regulation was the post of governor was now made governor general and bengal was the first province to have warren hastings as the first governor general he was assisted by an executive council of four members Second most important thing was that Supreme Court at Calcutta was established with one Chief Justice and three other judges. Sir Elijah Impey was the Chief Justice. The second law which was passed by the British was the Pitts India Act 1784. It created another body name of Board of Control to manage political affairs in India. Court of Directors kept on managing commercial affairs though. Thus, companies' positions were for the first time called British positions in India. So, we should remember that companies' positions were first time called British positions in India in 1784 under Pitts India Act. And the commercial wing was headed by the Court of Directors and political wind was headed by Board of Control. The act was introduced by the then British Prime Minister William Pitt. Charter Act 1813 This was very important as it ended the monopoly of the trading rights of British East India Company and allowed other companies to participate in trading activities with India. Next is Charter Act 1833. It created the post of Governor General of India in place of Governor General of Bengal. The presidencies of Madras and Bombay were taken away with their respective legislative powers and were made subordinate to the presidency of Calcutta. William Bentick was the first Governor General of India. This is an important point. William Bentick was the first Governor General of India. This act completely ended the commercial activities of the company. The company existed but it became a purely administrative and a political organization. After that, Charter Act of 1853 came. It established a separate Governor General's Legislative Council. It introduced an open system of competition for Indians into civil services. Makala Committee was formed in 1854 for this purpose. Satyarna Tagore became the first Indian to qualify that services in 1863. So it took about nine years for an Indian to qualify into civil services. The Crown Administration After 1857 revolt, the administration was moved to the Crown, that is the British Crown. Governor, Government of India Act was passed in 1858. It is also known as Good Act for Good Government of India. It abolished the British East India Company and abolished the Mughal administration as well. It abolished the Governor General's post and created a new post Viceroy. Lord Canning became the first Viceroy of India. So 1857 revolt took uh, during Lord Canning. So after this abolition of this Mughal administration and British East India Company administration, Lord Canning became the first Viceroy of India. Also, It also created a new office of Secretary of State for India and a 15-member council to assist him. He was a member of British Parliament. The Secretary of State was a member of British Parliament. Indian Council Act 1861 expanded the Viceroy's Executive Council made provision for him to nominate some Indians as non-official members. 
Lord Canning nominated Raja of Banaras, Maharaja of Patiala and Sir Dinkan Rao. So three posts were given to Indians. New Legislative Council for Bengal 1862, New Western Frontier Province 1866 and Punjab 1897 were established. Indian Council Act 1892. Power of discussing the budget was given to Legislative Council in the then India. First time the power of discussing the budget was given to the Indians and not uh, amending or anything. It, Indian Councils Act 1892 expanded the councils and some members could be nominated to both central as well as provincial legislative councils. Indian Councils Act 1909. This is also called Morley, Morley Minto Reforms and Minto is called father of communalism. The number of members in the central legislative council was increased from 16 to 60. Satyendra Prasad Sinha became the first Indian to be nominated as law member to the Viceroy Executive Council. Satyendra Prasad Sinha was from Bihar. The communal electorate was introduced. Muslims were given separate representations to elect their representatives. Hence, Minto is also referred as father of communal electorate. Government of India Act 1919, also called Montagu Chains for reforms, and it came into effect in 1921. Central and provincial subjects or list were introduced where they could frame laws in their respective list. Provincial subjects were further divided into transferred and reserved. Thus, this act introduced diarchy. So, diarchy was introduced by Government of India Act in 1919. It also introduced bicameralism and direct elections. Government of India Act 1935 provided for the establishment of an All India Federation with provinces and princely states as units. The federation never came into being as princely states did not join it. Abolished diarchy in the provinces and introduced provincial autonomy in its place. But in center it introduced diarchy. However, that never came into being. It also introduced bicameralism in provinces as well as extended separate electorates to depressed classes. Established RBI and Federal Court at the center. India and Independence Act 1947. Partition plan or the Mountbatten plan 3rd June 1947 was to give effect to partition of the country and at least declaration 20th February 1947 to provide independence to the nation. It created two independent dominions of India and Pakistan. It ended British rule and authorized the two independent nations constituent assemblies to frame their respective constitutions. The Indian Independence Bill got the Royal Assent on 18th July 1947. So we have to remember this date on Batten Plan 3rd June 1947 at Clement Atlas Declaration 20th February 1947 and Indian Independence Bill Royal Assent on 18th July 1947. So let's start how the Indian constitution was framed in Indian Constituent Assembly making of Indian constitution. It was M. N. Roy who proposed the idea of an independent constituent assembly for India in 1934. The constituent assembly was formed as per the guidelines suggested by the cabinet mission plan 1946. The mission was headed by Patrick Lawrence, 
and included two other members apart from him Stafford Crips and A. V. Alexander. So we have to remember these three names. Cabinet mission plan in nineteen forty six Bethic Lawrence, Stafford Crips and A. V. Alexander. The total strength of the assembly was three eighty nine. However, after partition, only two ninety nine remained. It was partly elected and partly nominated. The election to form the assembly took place in July August nineteen forty six. and the process was completed by november 1946 the first meeting of the assembly took place on 9 december 1946 and was attended by 211 members this date is also important the first meeting of constituent assembly took place on 9th december 1947 46 and was attended by 211 members dr sachidanan sinha became the temporary president of the assembly followed following the french practice as he was the elderly person so he was given this post on 11 december 1946 dr rajendra prasad and sc mukherjee were elected as president and vice president respectively sir b n rao was appointed as the constitutional advisor to the assembly on 13 december 1946 pandit nehru moved the objective resolution which later went on to become the preamble of the constitution in slightly modified form the resolution was unanimously adopted on 22nd january 1947 so we have to remember this date on 11 december 1946 rajendra prasad and sc mukherjee were elected as president and vice president and on 13 december 1946 objective resolution was passed by pandit nehru and preamble was adopted on 22nd january 1947 the constituent assembly ratified india's membership of the commonwealth in may 1949 also it adopted the national song national anthem on 24 january 1950 all these dates are very important and are often seen in exams national flag was adopted on 22nd july 1947 the assembly met for 11 sessions took 2 years 11 months and 18 days to frame up the final draft sat for 141 days in total and the draft constitution was considered for 114 days total amount incurred was around rupees 64 lakhs some important committees of the constituent assembly along with their respective chairpersons are as follows union powers committee ra jawalal nehru union constitution committee jawalal nehru provincial constitution committee sardar patel drafting committee b r ambedkar rules of procedure committee dr rajendra prasad steering committee rajendra prasad flag committee j b kriplani The followings were the members of drafting committee: Dr. B. R. Ambedkar as chairman, Aladi Krishna Swami Iyer, K. M. Munshi, N. Gopal Swami Iyengar, Syed Muhammad Sadullah, N. Madhava Rao, and T. T. Krishna Amchari. The final draft of the constitution was adopted on 26 November 1949, and it contained eight schedules. Twenty-two parts and three ninety-five articles. Now we have to. We are going to see the various sources of Indian Constitution. Government of India Act, nineteen thirty-five. Federal scheme, Office of the Governor, Judiciary, Public Service Commissions, Emergency Provisions, and Administrative Details. These were taken from Government of India Act, nineteen thirty-five. From the British Constitution. parliamentary government rule of law legislative procedure single citizenship cabinet system prerogative rights parliamentary privileges and bicameralism from us constitution fundamental rights independence of judiciary judicial review impeachment of the president removal of the supreme court and high court judges and post of vice president from irish constitution DPSP directive principles of state policy nomination of members to the Rajya Sabha and method of election of president 
Canadian Restitution Federation with a strong center, vesting of residuary powers in the center, the appointment of state governors by the center and advisory jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Australian Constitution Concurrent is freedom of trade, commerce and intercourse and the joint sitting of the two houses of parliament. Weimar Constitution of Germany Suspension of fundamental rights during emergency. Soviet Constitution Fundamental duties and the idea of justice, social, economic and political in the preamble. French Constitution, Republic and the Ideals of Liberty, Equality, Fraternity in the Preamble. South African Constitution, Procedure for Amendment of Constitution and Election of Members of Raj Sabha. Japanese Constitution, Procedure Established by Law. The Preamble. So we are going to see what's all in the preamble. The preamble says, we, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic and to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship, equality of status and of opportunity, and to promote among them all fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation. In our Constituent Assembly, this 26th day of November 1949, do hereby adopt an act and give to ourselves this constitution. So what are the points we should remember from this? The term preamble refers to the introduction or preface to the constitution. It's a kind of summary or essence of the constitution. The American Constitution was the first to begin with a preamble. N. A. Palkiwala has termed preamble as identity card of the Constitution. The preamble is somewhat based on the objective resolution moved by Nehru in the Constituent Assembly. Now, you should be remembering the date on which the objective resolution was passed. It was 13th December 1946. The preamble has been amended only once so far, that is by 42nd Amendment Act of 1976. Three words were added by the amendment, socialist, secular and integrity. The preamble reveals four ingredients or components. First is the source of the authority of the constitution. The preamble states that the constitution derives its authority from the people of India. Second, nature of Indian state. It declares India as a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic and republic polity. Third, objective of the constitution to provide justice, liberty, equality, fraternity to the citizens of India. Both date of adoption of constitution, 26th of November 1949. In Berubari Union case in 1960, the Supreme Court said that the preamble is not part of constitution. But in Keshavan and the Bharti case in 1973, the Supreme Court rejected the earlier opinion and held that preamble is a part of constitution. So the preamble can be amended. The preamble is neither a source of power to the legislature nor a prohibition upon the powers of the legislature. Provisions in the preamble are non-enforceable and in the court of law, that is, it's not justiciable. Now let us see the articles of the constitution one by one the union and its territory article one declares india that is bharat as union of states article number two empowers the parliament to admit into the union of india or establish new states on such terms and conditions as it thinks fit thus article two grants two powers to the parliament first the power to admit into the Union of India, new states, and the second, the power to establish new states. Article 3 relates to the formation or change of changes in the existing states of the Union of India 
in other words article 3 deals with the internal readjustment in the say of the in territories of the constituent states of the union of india so the changes in the name of the states is done by article number 3 citizenship the constitution confers the following rights and privileges on the citizens of india and denies same to the aliens rights conferred under article 15 16 19 20 9 and 30 these are rights only given only to the citizens of india right to vote in election to the lok sabha and state legislative assembly right to contest for the membership of the parliament and the state legislature eligibility to hold certain public offices that is president of india vice president of india judges of the supreme court and the high court governor of states attorney general of india and advocate general of states no person shall be a citizen of india or be deemed to be a citizen of india if he has voluntarily acquired the citizenship of any foreign states every person who is or is deemed to be a citizen of india shall continue to be such citizen subject to the provisions of any law made by the parliament article 10 says this and article 11 says parliament shall have the power to make any provisions with respect to the acquisition and termination of citizenship and all other matters relating to citizenship the five modes of acquisition of citizenship as per the citizenship act are by birth by descent by registration by naturalization by acquisition of any other territory into the indian state indian union the government of india provides citizenship to the people residing in the area that is acquired by a notification person occupying such area do not automatically become citizen of india on an acquisition of territory now let's see how citizenship can be lost loss of citizenship is by termination renunciation and deprivation india provides for single citizenship pio is a person registered as pio card holder under the ministry of home affairs scheme dated 19/8/2002 oci a person registered as overseas citizens of india oci under citizenship act 1955 the oci scheme is operational from 2/12/2005 now the the next chapter from constitution is the fundamental rights from article 12 to article 30 32 so the fundamental rights have been described as magna carta of india the concept has been taken from the us bill of rights earliest known evidence of rights was also present in ancient india iran etc following are the articles related to fundamental rights article 12 definition of the state article 13 laws inconsistent with part 3 or fundamental rights right to equality are from article 14 to article 18 article 14 equality before law article 15 provision of discrimination on grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth article 16 equality of opportunity in matter of public employment article 17 abolition of untouchability article 18 abolition of titles right to freedom from article 19 to 22 article 19 says 
guarantees to all the citizens of India right to freedom of speech and expression, right to assemble peacefully and without arms, right to form associations or unions, right to move freely throughout the territory of India, right to reside and settle in any part of the territory of India, right to practice and profess or to carry on any occupation, trade and business. Article 20 says protection in respect of conviction for offenses. Article 21 protection of life and personal liberty. Article 21A is right to education. Article 22 is protection against arrest and detention in certain cases. Rights against exploitation. Article 23 and Article 24. Article 23 says prohibition of traffic in human beings and forced labor. Article 24 prohibition of employment of children in factories and mines for under age of 14. Right to freedom of religion. Article 25 to Article 28. Article 25 freedom of conscience and free possession. Profession, practice and propagation of religion. Article 26 says freedom to manage religious affairs. Article 27 says freedom as to pay taxes for promotion of any particular religion. Article 28 says freedom from attending religious instructions. Cultural and educational rights. Article 29 and Article 30. Article 29 says protection of interest of minorities. Article 30 the right of minorities to establish and administer educational institutions. Right to constitutional remedies, Article 32. This is most of one of the most important article, <coughs> which is often asked in exams. Article 32, right to move to the Supreme Court for enforcement of fundamental rights. including the writs of habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibition, certiorari, and co warranto. Habeas corpus, it means to have the body of. This writ is used to enforce the fundamental right of individual liberty against unlawful detention against both private and public authorities. It means to bring the body of the person who has been accused to the court. Mandamus. It means we command. That means this writ is used by the court to order the public officials who have failed to perform his duty or refused to do his duty to resume his work. This writ is not available against private individuals. Prohibition. It means to forbid. A court that is higher in position issues a prohibition writ against a court that is lower in position to prevent the latter from exceeding its jurisdiction. This writ is available only against judicial and quasi-judicial bodies. Certiorari. It means to be certified. This writ is issued by a court higher in authority to a lower court or tribunal ordering them either to transfer a case pending without them to itself or squash their order in a case. It is used as both cure and prevention. co warranto It means by what authority Supreme Court or High Court issues this writ to prevent illegal surpation of the public office by a person. Article 33 deals with the power of parliament to modify the fundamental rights. Article 34 deals with martial laws. And Article 35 deals with legislation required to deal with fundamental rights. Fundamental rights which are available only to citizens are 15, 16, 19, 29 and 30. Fundamental rights those are available to both citizens as well as non-citizens are 14, 20, 21, 21A. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. Now, the next part, that is part 4, is Directive Principles of State Policy. Some important articles in DPSPs are to promote the welfare of the people by securing a social order, 
permitted by justice, social, economic and political and to minimize inequalities in income, status, facilities and opportunities. Article number 38. And then article number 39 says to secure right to adequate means of livelihood for all citizens, the equitable distribution of material resources of the community for the common good, dimension of concentration of wealth and means of production, equal pay for equal work for men and women, preservation of health and strength of workers and children against forcible abuse and opportunities for healthy development of children. Article 39A says to promote equal justice and to provide free legal aid to poor. This was added by 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act 1976. Article 41 to secure the right to work, to education and to public assistance in case of unemployment, old age, sickness and disablement. Article 42 says to make provisions for just and human conditions for work and maternity relief. Article 43A says to take steps to secure the participation of workers in the management of industries. It was also added by 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act 1976. Article number 40 to organize village panchayats and endow them with necessary powers and authority to enable them to function as units of self-government. This is very important article mostly asked in exam that which article is related to village panchayat that is article number 40. Article 43 states to promote cottage industry on an individual or cooperate basis in rural areas. Article 47 says to prohibit the consumption of intoxicating drinks and drugs which are injurious to health. Article 48 says to prohibit the slaughter of cows, calves and other milch and rot cattle and to improve their breeds. Article 44 says to secure for all citizens a uniform civil code throughout the country. As Uttarakhand has become the first state uh, to implement its own uniform civil court law, this can be a probable question in com upcoming exams. To provide early childhood care and education for all children under until they complete the age of 6 under Article 45, it was also amended by 86th Constitutional Amendment Act 2002 to separate the judiciary from the executive in the public services of the state article number 50 to promote international peace and security and maintain just and honorable relations between nations to foster respect for international laws and treaty obligations and to encourage settlement of international disputes by arbitration article number 51 after that, there are fundamental duties in Article Number 51A. Following this list of fundamental duties, these were taken from the Swaran Singh Committee. So, first is to abide by the Constitution and respect its ideals and institutions, national flag and national anthem, to cherish and follow the noble ideals that inspired the national struggle for freedom. To uphold and protect the sovereignty, unity and integrity of India. Next is to defend the country and render national service when called upon to do so. Fifth is to promote harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood among all the people of India transcending religious, linguistic and regional or sectional diversities and to renounce practices derogatory to the dignity of women. Sixth is to value and preserve the rich heritage of the country's composite culture. Seventh is to promote, protect and improve the natural environment including forests, lakes, rivers and wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures. Eighth is to, have, to develop 
scientific temper humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform ninth is to safeguard public property and to abjure violence tenth is to strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activities so that the nation constantly rises to higher levels of endeavor and achievement and eleventh is to provide opportunity for education to its children of what between the age of 6 and 14 years this duty was added by 86 constitutional amendment act 2002 now the next part is part 5 which deals with the union so first thing in union is president of india article 52 states that there shall be a president of india article 53 states that the executive power of the union shall be vested in the president and shall be exercised by him either directly or through officers subordinate to him he is the supreme commander of the defense forces in india though he is only the constitutional head or titular head d jury head or nominal executive or just a symbolic head important articles related to president so this is a very important table article 52 the president of india article 53 executive power of the union article 54 election of president article 55 manner of election of president article 56 term of office article 57 eligibility for re-election article 58 qualification of president's office article 59 conditions of president's office article 60 oath and affirmation by president article 61 procedure for impeachment so let us see all this now election of president the president shall be elected by members of an electoral college consisting of a the elected mps b the elected mlas of the state and c the elected mlas of national capital territory of delhi this was added by 70th amendment Act 1992 and with effect from 1 6 1st of June 1995 and Union Territory of Puducherry. Thus, nominated members of parliament and legislative assemblies and members of legislative councils do not participate in the presidential election. This is a very important point that who all are participate in the Electoral College of election of president the election is held in accordance with the system of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote and voting is done by secret ballot all doubts and disputes arise out of arising out of the presidential election are decided into an inquired by supreme court whose decision is final so if there is any dispute a doubt only supreme court can have its say and its decision is final the election are monitored and conducted by election commission of india article 61 impeachment of president president can be impeached for the violation of constitution however the term is not defined in the constitution the charges can be preferred by either house of parliament however 14 days notice shall be served to president before the acceptance of such a resolution also that notice must be signed by at least one fourth members of the total members of that house which initiates the charge next point is after the acceptance of that bill in that house that impeachment bill must be passed by the majority of two-third of the total members of that house then that bill goes to another house which should investigate the charges and the president shall have the right to appear and to be represented at such an investigation if another house sustains the charge and finds the president of violation and passes that resolution by two-third of the total membership of that house the president shall stand removed from the date of date the resolution is so passed 
Hence, impeachment is a quasi-judicial process, and though the nominated members of parliament do not participate in this in his election, they take part in impeachment process. So, this is an important point that nominated members of parliament do not participate in president's election, but they take part in impeachment process. Also, states' legislature do not have a role in impeachment process. important powers of president veto power there are three type of power veto absolute veto suspensive veto and pocket veto so absolute veto is withholding the assent to the bill the bill then ends and does not become an act for example in 1954 dr rajan prasad withheld his assent to the pepsu appropriation bill also in 1991 r venkat raman withheld his assent to the mp salaries allowance bill second is suspensive veto returning the bill for reconsideration to the parliament is called suspensive veto in 2006 president apj abdul kalam used this suspensive veto in the office of profit bill office of profit you must be knowing this office of profit bill however the president can return the bill for reconsideration to the legislature only once after which he has to give his consent so if the parliament passes the bill again and sends to the president for his consideration he have to sign in a suspensive veto bill so pocket veto the third type of veto is pocket veto taking no action on the bill sent to the president is called pocket veto there is no time limit provided in the constitution within which the president has to give his assent or sign the bill hence he has a bigger pocket than american president in 1986 president gyani jail singh applied pocket veto to the indian post office amendment bill judicial powers president has the power to grant pardon reprieve respite remit commute and sentence of a convict convicted person pardon it absolves the offender from all sentences and punishments reprieve it means the temporary suspension of the execution of sentence remission it reduces the amount of sentence without changing its character so the term is reduced in remission despite it leads to awarding of a lesser sentence in some special cases example in case of pregnant women commutation it substitutes one form of punishment to another of a lighter character note the judicial power of the president extends to cases where the sentence has been awarded by court martial and in cases where punishment is a death sentence the judicial power of governor does not extend to both these cases now let us see legislative powers the legislative power president are as follows the president summons the house of parliament at least twice a year at the place of his choice he nominates 12 members to the rajya sabha some bills such as the following follows needs president's recommendation for their introduction into parliament so this is an important point that a bill for formation of new states or alteration of boundary of ex- existing states money bill finance bill bill involving taxation or distribution of financial resources to states and a state bill that seeks to restrict freedom of trade these bills are needs uh, president's prior recommendation before introduced in the parliament next is vice president of india important articles related to vice president article 63 the vice president article 66 election of vice president article 67 term of office article 69 oath and affirmation by the vice president the vice president shall be ex officio chairman of council of states and shall not hold any other office of profit 
द फर्स्ट चेयरपर्सन ऑफ राज्यसभा वॉज डॉक्टर सर्वपल्ली राधाकृष्णन provided that during any period when the vice president acts as president or discharges the functions of president under article 35 he shall not perform his duties of the office of chairman of the council of state and shall not be entitled to any salary or allowance payable to the chairman of the council of states under article 97 This is the second most important function of vice president. He can act as president in case of death, impeachment, resignation or otherwise of the president of India. However, he can act as president only for the maximum period of 6 months. This question is really asked many times. the vice president so within 6 months there should be election of a new president the vice president gets the salary allowance etc of the president when he acts as a president not as the chairperson of the rajya sabha the salary emoluments extra of the chairperson of rajya sabha is mentioned in the second schedule of the constitution article 66 election of vice president the vice president of india is elected by an electoral college consisting of elected and nominated members of both house lok sabha and rajya sabha of parliament MLAs are not included in the election of vice president. The vice president of India is elected by proportional representation system by means of single transferable vote. Voting in vice president election is done by secret ballot. A candidate to be elected to the office of vice president must secure a fixed quota of votes. All disputes related to the election of vice president are inquired into and decided by the Supreme Court. whose decision is final eligibility criteria for vice president he she should be citizen of india he she should have completed the age of 35 years he she should be qualified for the member of rajya sabha does not hold any office of profit under a union state or local authority however for this purpose the president vice president governor of a state and a minister of the union of a state are not held to be holding an office of profit an office of profit is an office that would give its occupant the opportunity to gain a financial advantage or benefit removal of vice president vice president can be removed by resolution of raj sabha passed by a majority of all the then members of rajya sabha and agreed by lok sabha a 14 days no day notice needs to be given to the vice president procedure of removal of vice president cannot be initiated in lok sabha parliament of india organization of the parliament the parliament consists of president lok sabha and the rajya sabha so this is uh, also a question asked frequently that uh, is president a member of parliament lok sabha is the lower house and rajya sabha is the upper house composition of rajya sabha under article 80 The maximum strength of Rajya Sabha is fixed at 250, out of which 238 are to be the representatives of the state and union territories, elected indirectly, and 12 are nominated by the president. 
At present, the Rajya Sabha has 245 members. Of these 229 members represent the states. The four members represent the union territories, and 12 members are nominated by the president. The fourth schedule of the constitution deals with the allocation of seats in Rajya Sabha to the state and the union territories. The representatives of state in Rajya Sabha are elected by elected members of state legislative assemblies. The seats are allocated to the states in Rajya Sabha are based on their population. Composition of Lok Sabha: The maximum strength of Lok Sabha is fixed at 552. Out of this, 530 members are to be representatives of the states. 20 members are to be representatives of the union territories. Two members may be nominated by president from Anglo-Indian community, but this has been removed by 104th constitutional amendment. At present, the Lok Sabha has 545 members. The representatives of states in Lok Sabha are directly elected by people from their respective constituencies. So, Lok Sabha has directly elected representatives, and Rajya Sabha indirectly. Uh, elected representative the voting age was reduced from 21 to 18 years by the 61st constitutional amendment act 1988 qualification disqualifications to be mp first eligibility must be citizen of india second minimum age 30 years in rajya sabha and 25 years in lok sabha he must possess other qualifications prescribed by parliament hence the representation of people act 1951 criteria for disqualifying an mp only the following criteria are mentioned in the constitution for disqualification of an mp first if he holds an office of profit under union or state second if he is of unsound mind and stands so declared by a court third if he is an undischarged insolvent fourth if he is not a citizen of india or has voluntarily acquired a citizenship of a foreign state or is under any acknowledgement of ally chance to a foreign state and if he is so disqualified under any law made by the parliament representation of people act 1951 third the constitution also says lays down that a person shall be disqualified from being a member of parliament he if, if he is so disqualified on the grounds of defection under the provision of the 10th schedule now here we have to note that under the 10th schedule a mp may be disqualified if he voluntarily gives up the membership of his political party second if he abstains from voting in the house contrary to any direction given by his party unless party condemns his action in 15 days and third an independent member is disqualified if he joins any political party after the election double membership a person cannot be a member of both houses of parliament at the same time a house can declare the seat of member vacant if he is absent from all its meetings for a period of 60 days without its permission this 60 days is not a continuous Two months, but it is a sixty days on which the press, uh, parliament was in action. So it does not count the holidays. Speaker of Lok Sabha, the speaker is elected by the Lok Sabha from amongst its members as soon as may be after its first sitting. The date of election of speaker is fixed by the president. second the speaker offers his resignation to the deputy speaker and he can be removed by a resolution passed by a majority of members of lok sabha 
however only after giving him a 14 day notice third he presides over a joint sitting of two houses of parliament such a sitting is summoned by the president to settle a deadlock between the two houses on a bill he decides whether a bill is a money bill or not and his decision on this question is final and political parties cannot go to supreme court if he a uh, speaker has given his decision that a bill is a money bill under the anti defection law the authority of speaker is final on disqualification of a member he cannot vote in the first instance though he can vote in event of a tie when his removal motion is in under consideration he can take part and speak in the proceedings and cat can vote as well but not in case of a tie so let's see about deputy speaker the deputy speaker is elected by the members of lok sabha from amongst themselves by simple majority of the members present and voting the speaker and deputy speaker give their resignation to each other deputy speaker can be removed by resolution passed by majority of all the then members of the house after serving a 14 day notice to him speaker pro tem as soon as a lok new lok sabha is elected the president appoints a speaker pro tem who is usually the senior most member of the house his function includes administering the oath to new speaker and preside over the election of speaker attorney general of india attorney general is not a member of parliament or the council of minister but he has a right to take part in proceedings of either house but he can vote but he cannot vote so attorney general can take part in proceedings of parliament but he cannot vote a person qualified to be judge of supreme court is appointed the attorney general by the president he holds the office during the pleasure of president deputy chairman of rajya sabha he is elected by rajya sabha from amongst its members and he remains in the office until the expiry of his term as a member in the absence of chairman deputy chairman presides over the functions and proceedings of rajya sabha sessions of parliament the budget session from february to may the monsoon session from july to september and the winter session from november to december the maximum gap between two sessions of parliament cannot be more than 6 months the president summons and prorogues the two houses of parliament important terms related to sessions of the parliament prorogation a session of the house if terminated by an order called the prorogation order made by the president adjournment sine die it means termination of the sitting of the house without specifying of or fixing any date for its next sitting such order is made by presiding or officer of the house hung parliament when no single party has majority to form the government quorum minimum number of members required to carry out business of the house is called quorum there should be at least 1/10th members present to conduct the business of the house and that means 55 in lok sabha and 25 in rajya sabha start and unstart questions a start question is one to which a member desires an oral answer and an unstart question is one to which written answer is desired by 
the asking member gulletin when due to lack of time demands for grant are put to vote whether they are discussed or not in the house on the last day is called gulletin when there are many demands for grant and there is lack of time during the budget session especially we see that so a gulletin is conducted and without the discussions of all the provisions the bill is passed that is the appropriation bill or which is called budget important points regarding bills money and finance bills cannot be introduced in rajya sabha money finance and ordinary bills and article 3 can only be introduced on the recommendation of president constitution amendment bill can be introduced in either house the president cannot send back a money bill for reconsideration of the parliament he shall give his assent to the money bill a money bill is defined under article 110 there is no such provision for the joint sitting of two houses for money bill and constitutional amendment bill this is very important point that uh, joint sitting cannot be called for money bill and constitutional amendment bill so for joint sitting joint session has been called only three bills that have been passed at joint sessions the dowry prohibition act 1961 the banking services commission repeal bill 1978 and the prevention of terrorism act 2002 types of amendment procedures so there are three types of amendment procedures first is by simple majority where 50% of the members present and voting uh, should vote in favor so simple majority means that majority of the members present and voting that is more than 50% the following article are amended under this method first is admission of new states so if there is a admission of new states or formation of new states or naming of new states change in the names and boundaries of the state this is done by simple majority so the next thing is creation or abolition of legislative councils in the states by the parliament next is salaries allowances of president governor and judges of supreme court and high court is passed by simple majority quorum of houses power privileges of mps delimitations of constituencies these all are done by simple majority these amendments are done by simple majority second is by special majority under this a bill is passed by each house of the parliament by a majority of the total memberships of that house and by a majority of not less than 2/3 of the members in the house present and voting so all the articles of the constitution can be amended by this method except the specific provisions which are mentioned in the article 368 of the constitution which is in the part 20 by special majority with ratification by states some federal matters are amended by this method under this the bill is required to be passed by the parliament and the special majority and needs to be ratified by more than 50% of the states there is no limit no time limit within which the states must ratify such bills so gst was passed by this method of amendment following provisions fall under this category election and manner of election of president extent of executive power of the union article 73 and states article 162 union judiciary high courts legislative relations between center and states seven schedule provision dealing with amendment of constitution article 368 important parliamentary finance committees so first is committee on public accounts 
the committee on public accounts consists of 15 members from lok sabha and 7 members from rajya sabha the term of office of members is not more than 1 year the committee examines account showing the appropriation of some granted by parliament annual financial accounts of government of india and reports of cag second is committee on estimates the estimates committee consists of 30 members all from lok sabha this question is asked many times in exam that which committee consists only members from lok sabha that is estimates committee and this the 30 members of lok sabha who are elected by lok sabha every year from amongst its members according the principle of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote the functions of estimates committee are to examine whether the money is well laid out within the limits of the policy implied in the estimates to suggest the forms in which estimates shall be presented to parliament third is committee on public undertakings the committee consists of 15 members elected from lok sabha and seven members from rajya sabha functions to examine the reports and accounts of public undertakings reports of cag may also examine such matters which may be referred to it by the house or by the speaker provision under which the parliament can make laws on state subjects article 249 if rajya sabha passes a resolution with no not less than two third majority on the ground that it is a national interest it can allow the parliament to legislate on the state subjects such law cannot be forced of be in force of one year but can be extended and any number of times it ceases to have effect 6 months after the resolution ceases to be in force article 250 if a national emergency is declared under article 352 the parliament has the right to make law with respect to all the 61 subjects in the state list automatically this is article 250 Article two fifty two. If legislature of two or more states required to request the parliament to make a law on the state subject, the parliament can do so. However, such law can be amended or repealed only by the parliament. Example: the Wildlife Protection Act of nineteen seventy two. Article two fifty three says, parliament can be may can make laws on the state subjects to comply with any international agreements. to which india is a party article 356 says if president's rule is imposed in a state the power of legislature of the state is exercised by the parliament emergency provision in the constitution there are three kinds of emergency provisions mentioned in the constitution that has that are article 352 356 and 360 Article three fifty two is also referred as national emergency. Emergency caused by threat of security of India by war, external aggression, or armed rebellion is termed as national emergency. It is under Article three fifty two. Armed rebellion was replaced. The word internal disturbance in forty fourth Amendment Act nineteen seventy eight. Earlier it was written as internal disturbance on which. the emergency was implemented by indira gandhi so uh, in 1978 when mm, the government was changed and janata party came it uh, amended this internal disturbance word with armed rebellion in 44th amendment act 1978 so far national emergency has been declared three times in india duration initially one month during which it has to be approved by the parliament by a special majority if parliament approves a proclamation then it says stays in force for six months it can be approved any number of times but not more than six months at a time revocation the proclamation can be revoked by the president at any time it does not require approval of the parliament also if not less than 110 member of the lok sabha issue 
a notice approving the emergency to the president when lok sabha is not in session then the special sitting of the lok sabha has to be held in the next 14 days to consider such a resolution affect the administration is converted into unitary so the federation having the states and union becomes unitary parliament can enact laws on subjects in a state list effect on fundamental rights article 358 states that when emergency is declared on the grounds of war or external aggression not on the arm, ground of armed rebellion the six fundamental rights under article 19 are automatically suspended the president under article 359 may order suspend the operation of any of the other fundamental rights when any an emergency is declared on the ground of war or external aggression however the fundamental right under article 20 protection in respect to conviction of for offenses and article 21 right to life cannot be suspended even during the national emergency president's rule article 356 this is the second type of emergency emergency caused by the failure of constitutional machinery in the state is called president's rule or article 356 president makes the proclamation with or without the report of the governor president cannot assume the power of the high court duration initially for 2 months after approval of the parliament 6 months at a stretch it can be enforced maximum for 1 year it can be extended beyond 1 year but in no case beyond 3 years in the following case am an, an emergency under article 352 exist if election commission certifies that there is difficulty in holding election in the concerned state effect council of ministers headed by cm is dismissed and the assembly is incapable of making laws and the parliament make laws there is no effect in the fundamental right of the people of the state governor becomes the head of the state financial emergency under article 366 a proclamation is made by the president if he is satisfied that a situation has arisen where financial stability of the india or any of its territory has been threatened duration initially for 2 months after approval parliament approval of the parliament is it stays in force until it is revoked by the president effect union government may give directions to states regarding financial matters president may ask the states to reduce the salary of all persons in government services all bills of the states may be asked to be reserved for the consideration of the president president may also direct to reduce salary and allowances of central government employees and judges of the supreme court and high court indian judiciary supreme court article 124 to 147 mentions in part 5 of the constitution deals with the organization independence jurisdiction power and procedures and so on of the supreme court at present the strength of supreme court judges stands at 34 judges including the chief justice that is 33 plus 1 originally the strength of supreme court was fixed at 8 one chief justice and seven other judges appointment the judges of the supreme court are appointed by the president the appointment of the chief justice is made by the president after consultation with such judges of the supreme court and high courts as he deems necessary the other judges are appointed by the president after consultation with the chief justice and such other judges of the supreme court and the high courts as he deems necessary the consultation with the chief justice is obligatory in the case of appointment of a judge other than chief justice in 2015 the national judicial appointment commission was declared ultra virus by supreme court and 
hence the collegium system still holds the ground mentioned above it was 99th amendment act and it was uh, the supreme court using judicial review uh, declared it illegal qualification for supreme court judge a person to be appointed as judge of supreme court should have following qualifications he should be a citizen of india he should have been a judge of high court for at least 5 years or he should have been an advocate of high court for 10 years he should be a distinguished jurist in the opinion of the president oath oath of the judges and cgi is administered by president or any other person appointed by him for this purpose tenure of judges he holds office until the age of 65 years he can resign his office by writing to the president he can be removed from his office by president on the recommendation of the parliament removal of judges a judge of the supreme court can be removed from his office by an order of president however he can do so only after an address by parliament has been presented to him in the same session for such removal the address must be supported by a special majority of each house of parliament a majority of the total member of the house and the majority of not less than 2/3 of the members of the at house present and voting the ground of removal are proved misbehavior or incapacity the the jurisdiction and power of the supreme court can be classified into original jurisdiction writ jurisdiction appellate jurisdiction advisory jurisdiction court of record the constitution has constituted the supreme court as the guarantor and defender of the fundamental rights of the citizen the supreme court is empowered to issue writs including habeas corpus mandamus prohibitions court warrant and certiorari certiorari for the enforcement of the fundamental rights of an aggrieved citizen high court at present there are 24 high courts in the country out of them three are common high courts delhi is the only union territory that is that has a high court of its own since 1966 the other union territories fall under the jurisdiction of different state high courts unlike unlike supreme court the number of judges of high court is flexible and is decided by the president based on the amount of work before the high court appointment of judges the judges of the high court are appointed by president the chief justice of high court is appointed by the president after consultation with the chief justice of india and the governor of the state concerned for appointment of the other judges the chief justice of the concerned high court is also consulted in case of the common high court for two or more states the governor of all the states concerned are consulted by the president no appointment can be made without conformity with opinion of cgi under article 222 president after consultation with cgi who consults four senior most judges of supreme court and two chief justice of high court where the transfer is taking place can transfer a judge from one high court to other the opinion provided by the chief justice of india is binding on the president qualification of judges a person to be appointed as a judge of high court should have the following qualification he should be a citizen of india he should have held a judicial office in territory of india for 10 years or he should have been advocate of a high court for 10 years oath and affirmation or to the judges judge is administered by the governor of the state or some person appointed by him for this purpose tenure of judge he hold office under until he attains the age of 62 years in supreme court it was 65 years he ho- can resign his office by writing to the president he can be removed from his office by the president on the recommendation of the parliament he vacates this his office when he is appointed as a judge of the supreme court or when he is transferred to another high court salary and allowances of high court judges is ca- charged on the consolidated fund of the state while pension are charged on the consolidated fund of india 
the writ jurisdiction of high court is wider than supreme court under article 32 supreme court can issue writs only when fundamental rights is infringed while high court under article 226 can issue writs for the enforcement of fundamental rights as well as other ordinary legal rights supreme court is bound to issue writs under article 32 while high court issue writs under article 226 at their discretion governor article 153 governor for states article 155 appointment of governor article 156 term of office of governor article 157 qualification for appointment as governor article 158 condition of office article 159 oath by the governor the governor is the de jure executive head at the state level his position is analogous to that of the president at the center the governor is appointed by as to be appointed as governor of any state or to or more states as a person he should be a citizen of india and should have age of attain the age of 35 years he should not hold any office of profit as well like the president the governor is also entitled to several immunities and privileges during his term of office he is immune from any camp criminal proceedings even in respect of his personal acts the oath is administered by the chief justice of the corresponding state high court and in case of his absence the senior most judge of that particular court a governor holds office for a term of 5 years from the date on which he enters upon his office a governor holds office during the pleasure of the gun he pleasure pleasure of the president and he offers his resignation to the president he appoints advocate general of a state and determines his remuneration the advocate general holds office during the pleasure of governor he appoints the state election commissioner however the state election commissioner can be removed only in the like manner and on the like grounds as judge of a high court he appoints a chairman and member of the state public service commission however they can be removed only by president and not by a governor he nominates one sixth of the members of the state legislative council he can promulgate ordinance when the state legislature is not in session the ordinance must be approved by the state legislature within 6 weeks from its reassembly he can also withdraw an ordinance any time the ordinance power is given in article 213 for governor and 123 for president he can grant pardon reprieve respite and remission of punishment or suspend remit and commute the sentence of any person convicted of any offense against any law relating to a matter to which the executive power of the state extends article 161 article 371 some governors have to discharge certain special responsibilities under article 371 to 371j such special states are gujarat maharashtra nagaland assam manipur arunachal pradesh sikkim mizoram goa and karnataka chief minister chief minister is a real executive authority and de facto executive he is the head of the government the total strength of the number of ministers including the chief minister in the state should not exceed 15 percent of the total strength of 
the legislative assembly of that state however the number of ministers including chief minister in the state should also not be less than 12 so the this cabinet ministers should not be more than 15% of the total strength this provision was added by 91st amendment act of 2003 the a member of either house of state legislature belonging to any political party who is disqualified on the grounds of disaffection shall also be disqualified to be appointed as minister the provision was also added by 91st amendment act of 2003 state legislature organization of state legislature most of the states of india have unique amla legislature six states have bicameral legislature which are telangana andhra pradesh maharashtra bihar up and karnataka the legislative council is upper house and legislative assembly is the lower house delhi and puducherry are the only two union territories having legislative assembly composition of state legislature the legislative assembly consists of representatives directly elected by the people based on universal adult franchise its maximum strength is fixed at 500 minimum strength is at 60 depending on the population size of the state however in case of sikkim it is 32 goa and mizoram it is 40 the members of the legislative council are indirectly elected the maximum strength of legislative council is fixed at 1/3 of the total strength of the corresponding assembly and minimum strength is fixed at 40 but an exception being jammu kashmir but now it is not there manner of election of the total number of members of legislative council one third are elected by member of local bodies in such states such as municipalities one twelfth are elected by graduates of 3 years standing and residing within state one twelfth are elected by teachers of Three years standing in state, not lower in standard than secondary school. One third are elected by members of legislative assembly of the state from amongst persons who are not member of assembly, and the remainder are nominated by governor from among the persons who have special knowledge of practice, experience of literature, science, art, cooperative movement, and social service. Thus, five sixth of the total number of members of the legislative council are indirectly elected, and one sixth are nominated by governor. The members are elected in accordance with the system of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote. Duration of two house analogous to Lok Sabha, the legislative assembly is also not a permanent chamber. The term of assembly is five years, from the date of its first meeting after the general election. analogous to the rajya sabha the legislative council is a continuing chamber that is it is a permanent body and it is not subject to dissolution but one third of its members retire on the expiration of every second year membership of state legislature the constitution lays down the following qualification to be a member of state legislature must be a citizen of india he must not be less than of 30 years for legislative council and not less than 25 years for legislative assembly he should not have been found guilty as per provisions of the presentation of people's act 1951 in defection case also a member is liable to be disqualified as per the anti defection act tens schedule also he should not be unsound mind he should not hold any office of profit he is not declared an undischarged insolvent etc presiding officer of state legislature it is similar to that of the lok sabha with uh, having a speaker and deputy speaker and for legislative council there are chairman and deputy chairman local government panchayati raj system the first panchayati raj system in india was established by rajasthan in 1959 in nagaur district followed by andhra pradesh thereafter the system was adopted by most of the states the major concern regarding the local self government was its architecture among of amount of power to be devolved finances etc 
Several committees were constituted by respective union governments to devise a method for the same. Some important committees were this is very important as Balwal Rai Mehta Committee 1957. It suggested three tier gum structure. Ashok Mehta Committee 1977. It suggested two tier system. G.V. K. Rao Committee 1985 recommended revival of Panchayati Raj institution three tier system. L.M. Singhvi Committee 1986 recommended constitutional status to Panchayati Raj institution. Also recommended setting up of financial finance commission for panchayats. Tangan Committee in 1989 recommended constitutional recognition to panchayats. Gadgil Committee in 1988. 73rd Amendment Act 1992. This act added Part 9 to the Constitution and consists of provision from Articles 243 to 243 Also, it has added 11 schedule consisting of 29 items of panchayat. These are the important articles for panchayat. Gram Sabha, three tier system, reservation of seats, qualification, state finance commission, and state election commission. 74th Amendment Act 1992. This amendment act inserted a new part 9a, which deals with the administration of municipalities and Nagar Palikas. It consists of Article 243P to 243ZG. It also added a new Schedule Schedule 12th to the Constitution. These are the important articles. Composition of Municipalities Article 243R, Wards 243S, Duration 243Q, Reservation of Seat 243T, and Qualification 243V. There are different constitutional bodies like Election Commission under Article 324 and Part 15. The first Election Commissioner was Supumar Sen, then National Party and State Party. UPSC mentioned under Article 315 to 323. In Part 14 of the Constitution, Article 315 mentions about the Public Service Commission for Union and State. Then there is Finance Commission with Article Number 280, and NK Singh was for uh, 15th Finance Commission. National Commission for SC. Mentioned in Article 338, National Commission for ST, Article 338A, Special Officer for Linguistic Minorities in Article 350B, CAG in Article 148. So these are the important points for CAG. Attorney General in Article 76, Advocate General in Article 165, Non-Constitutional Bodies like Niti Aayog, NDC, NHRC, CIC, CVC, Lokpal and Lokayog compositions, and and here is a list of important articles. So I am just scrolling it. So afterwards, you can download this PDF. I will give the link in the description. So we can see that all the important articles are mentioned here, and we are end, ending this video here but here is one thing i would like to show you in this pdf this pdf is not only having quality material but it is having uh, all the subjects like indian history geography economy polity general science and general awareness and it is also having mcq questions with 2000 plus previous year questions with answers uh, subject wise so if you want to download this pdf i will give the link in the description thank you